Hey, it's been a while. Uh, I've been rather busy lately, so I haven't made many videos, but I want to get back into it, try and make some more than what I've been doing, and uh, yeah, try and get something interesting going on. Recently, I picked up this. This is half of it. Some might recognize this straight up. I'll move it in a bit there, and uh, back out to what we're working on today. This is a 3458A 8.5 digit multimeter. Finally got one in my hands. Um, really happy about this. It's an Agilent branded one. Uh, built in, uh, well, sold in 2001. So it's uh, not going to have the problem with the uh, the drift issues of the earlier models. But it's also nicely burnt in. It's nicely uh, aged and uh, shouldn't be drifting too much just because, you know, new ones, they got to settle in and that sort of thing. So this one is a nice vintage. Um, the video, this video won't be about doing anything on this like with the restoration or anything because it's just a few plastic bits and pieces I'm replacing and uh, the capacitors and put a new fan in nothing too crazy at all but the one thing I am doing which is the subject of this video is replacing the Dallas Envy Rams um, I've put sockets in here already uh, this is the uh, chip that holds the firmware earlier ones have more chips this is a larger capacity chip and I think the later ones might have a different type of thing I don't know if it's flash or whatever I'm not sure but this is a UV EEPROM I've socketed it I've upgraded to version 9.2 I've put the uh, option 001 in this is the expanded memory so I'll put the sockets there and uh, I've also taken the chance to socket the Dallas NV RAMs while I had the board out now this one here is the one you got to be careful of this is the one that holds all your calibration constants this is just like user data and stuff they don't really matter. If these go blank, you get an error on the screen saying, oh, the memory's needs to be initialized or the memory's got an error, and then it will continue working, no problems. If this one dies, you lose your calibration, and uh, yeah, it's expensive. If you send this unit back to Keysight, you're looking about two, two and a half grand or so for a calibration, and um, yeah, it's uh, not not fun. <laughs> so you don't want to lose the information. You don't lose that data. So you can actually copy it out. So before you do anything, uh, this is the caveat, this is the uh, the warning, the uh, yeah, go back up your stuff, copy out this chip. You can do it through the GPIB, uh, there's various uh, apps you'll find online. I used a Win GPIB by Ian J on uh, the EV blog forums, fantastic bit of software, you can use it for data logging and uh, automated testing and all that sort of stuff with a number of different pieces of equipment, but one of the functions it does uh, provide is you can copy out the data from this chip you plug the GPIB into the computer um, and you can just copy it through so it's great for backing up make sure you if you do that make sure you take at least two copies and then compare them to make sure they're the same because if you get a bad read you don't want to you know lose all your data just because you took one copy and it was bad so make sure you get two consecutive good reads and then you know you got the data so I've done that once I socketed this I took the chip out put it into my um T48, I think. Uh, I think that's what the one I've got, the uh, chip programmer. And uh, copied the data out and compared it, and it was identical. So I got three good copies of that. So my data is safe. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace these, not with Dallas NV RAMs, but with F RAMs. These ones here, they were replaced, uh, well, they were made in 2016 and the end of 2015, the 49th week of 2015 and the 8th week of 2016, so they're about 8 years old now. Uh, these have been replaced, because like I said, this unit was sold in 2001, so they've already, this has been for calibration twice. Uh, there's two stickers on the um, on the unit, uh, two key site calibration stickers, so at some point these were replaced, so they are newer than what the uh, unit was ship, uh, shipped with, but I want to put FRAMs in, so I'll never have to think about it again, because these are getting hard to get, uh, and they're getting very expensive. Don't buy them new uh, from AliExpress or from eBay or whatever because they're not new. They just re-badge re them or you end up with um, old un old parts that are almost dead anyway. Uh, some of these you can get from Mouse and DigiKey, but yeah, they're getting really expensive. So the FRAMs, I have got them here in this side up. There you go. This one here is going to go here and these two are going to go here. And they're a direct replacement once you have a uh, an adapter board. These uh, FRAMs, you used to be able to get them in dip chips, and they will literally just plug in um, if you had the same pin count. But they don't make them like that anymore. They only make them in SMD. So 
I made some adapter boards. I'll have, uh, what do we got? Two of the big ones, one of the small ones. Uh, f links to these files will be down below. And uh, yeah, you can get them made at PCBWay because that's who made them for me. So special thanks to PCBWay, of course, the uh, main sponsor of this channel. Got me these uh, boards and uh, yeah, they come out great. You can see they're um, real nice. So there's a few little points of note about these. I'll get this uh, 3458 out of the way. So these, you've got to make sure that you don't use the normal pin headers because I've got one here. The, this is a normal 2.54 mil or 0.1 inch uh, pin header. You can snap them off however long you need it. But being the square type, they're too big to fit in the um, in the socket. So I've got a socket here as well. The socket is too small. You can't get them in. If you try and push those in, you're going to damage things and break stuff. They also won't fit in the holes because I made them too small. So what you've got to do is you need to use a different type. And you can get these on eBay or AliExpress. These are fine to buy from eBay and AliExpress. They're a round pin. If you do a search for round pin, uh, you know, 2.54 millimeter header pins or whatever, you'll find this stuff. I'll put a link down below. I bought these in a Kihabara because I found ones that were shorter on one side. So that way when I put them on there, I don't really have to trim them down to make them neat. I've got a little scrap of another type. They're long on both sides. These are ones from eBay. So if you solder those in, make sure that the uh, sloped side, the little uh, angled end, is away from the PCB. But they're going to stick through, so you just have to snip them off, that's all. These ones are just a bit neater to use. But I haven't found these ones online, only in a Kihabara. So next time I'm in a Kihabara, pick some up from Akazuki Denshi. $2 a strip or 200 yen a strip. And uh, yeah, you'll be fine. But these are fine to use anyway. So what we're going to do is I have some of these snipped up already. And these will go in here. You can see there, they're just, just nice. Beautiful. And a little trick I'm going to do is so that they don't fall out or be all like wibble wobbly when I'm trying to solder, I'll stick them in. To a socket like that and now when I solder they're going to be perfectly lined up beautiful so I've I've got to put a little capacitor on there a little decoupling capacitor I'll put that on there just for for good luck and just for the the fun of it and um, then let's just put the uh, FRAM chip on so uh, I'll get to that we'll see if we can do it on camera um, but apologies if I get my head in the way. All right, we've got the three chips all done. The two larger ones obviously got the larger sockets. There, all the user data and the measurements and stuff, all that sort of sta save stuff goes in there. So I don't care about what was there already because it's just, you know, this is a second-hand unit. I don't care what readings were in there before. So these are blank. It's going to throw up a uh, checksum error and then it's going to initialize the RAM and then once we've uh, rebooted it, then it'll be fine. So that's going to be expected. We're going to expect to see a, uh, a checksum error on the second reboot it should be fine and this one here is a bit funny as well because uh, the chip in there is about twice the capacity of the DS1220 the uh, FM16 W08 it's about twice the capacity so uh, I had some trouble programming it with my T was it T48 programmer doesn't like programming it in the um, in the adapter there because the chip says it's one thing the capacity says another thing it doesn't really uh, like it so so some people have had some luck with a uh, adapter this apparently adapts the uh, 
FM 16W8 back to an FM 16W8. So you can program it as such, as long as you don't go over half its capacity, because that, that chip is twice the capacity of what it's pretending to be. I had no luck with this working. It did not work at all. So I don't know if it's a problem with me or if it's a problem with my programmer or something, but it just didn't work. So I also tried programming this as a FM 16W08, um, and it worked except it threw a, an error, the programmer threw an error, and it didn't quite work properly. So I've uh, resorted to the the old just program the chip, then solder it in, and hope for the best. Hope your soldering doesn't cause any problems. And it seems like it's okay because I did check it after I uh, after I programmed it, soldered it in, and then I checked it again, and it seems to be good. So let's put that one there in like that and uh, let's power it up and see what happens okay go on acapella here handheld so sorry about the shakiness we're going to um, turn it on now and see what it does it's definitely going to give us that uh, RAM checksum error there it is all a cow all require so it's going to have to have an auto cow that's fine testing the hardware otherwise good so the AK, I'll just I'll put the case on, let it warm up for a while, and then run that. That's not a problem at all. At least it's not saying cow all required. That means I've got to get the uh, 10 volt standard and the 10k ohm uh, resistor, or send off to key site. But AK, it can do it itself once it's warmed up, so that's fine. No more RAM errors. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. And there we are. All done and looking fantastic. Special thanks to PCBWay once again. Two enthusiastic thumbs up. So I'll do that uh, ACAL once I've put this case back together and let the unit warm up. Then I'll be back and running again. Now you may be wondering why I didn't just put the uh, calibration data back in via the GPIB port. Well, I would have if I could have, and I would have loved to have done that, but it doesn't seem to be possible. Uh, there seems to be some sort of security. You can pull the data out, but there's uh, some security functions or maybe even some hidden GPIB commands or something, uh, undocumented stuff that is stopping the data going back in. There'll be security there mainly so that you know, people can't accidentally or deliberately change the calibration on the unit. Um, but it hasn't been figured out how to get around that yet. And it seems like from what I'm reading online that that security changes for each uh, firmware release. So anything in this will affect it. So you, if you reverse engineer it for version 8, but you got version 4, it won't work, apparently, from what I'm reading. So if anyone does figure out a way to put the calibration data back in through the GPIB, a lot of people will be very happy because it would make this whole process a lot easier. And also just backing up the ra uh, the cow RAM, because you can back it up, but then you've got to pull the chip out to program it manually. You can't just feed it back in through the GPIB again. So, yeah, if anyone wants to figure that out, please go ahead and do it because uh yeah it'll make life a little bit easier for this sort of process but we did get it working um i didn't get that adapter working but yeah just programming that chip straight up soldering it in it works fantastic so we're done i hope you found that interesting and somewhat informative we'll see you in the next one